All right, buddy, why don't you just back up there real quickly? Just keep yourself away from me. You stay away. What are you doing? Why are you moving closer to me? Get away from me. You're not going to like me if you get any closer to me, you little bratty cat. I refuse for you to get any closer to me. If you get any closer to me, there might be violence happening to you soon. Why are you trying to get close to me at this point? Hey there, welcome to another talk of ramblings. That's the short break I had to take because I got a bit ill, the January creeping crowds, but I am mostly feeling better now. Probably still a little hacky, but let you know I feel better, and I have a new microphone. Film that might make things sound a little better, but also probably sound like complete tra trash because I'm always rambling, but here's hoping. Anywho, go guide your movies. So we'll be starting with the first one, which is actually off in this franchise because generally this is one of the last things for a season. The versus team-up movie with Ghost Sager. So, superhero... <coughs> so, one nine, nine hero great battle starts with the eponymous great legendary bat... I know that's super mega force, we don't talk about that. The, the big one nine, nine battle between the set, the past three, four teams and the zone. Uh, which was teased in the main show, but never show. So, what I think works here because there's really no way of more less doing something like that justice in the main TV series in the way that is the first thing we see more less shows that yes it's big and cool but it's not the thing we about here any who after that the plot then shifts over to the Gokaijers fighting off some some Zongyak forces until they decide to use the Ghost Ager keys which are subsequently stolen by the Ghost Ager team so have they been just following them for the past couple of weeks until they showed up up to use the keys how long have they been following them that is understand any the go carters like hey goes back those things those are ours and they're like no -uh, it's all ours and you owe us the ever key key for our friend here since go right now it's kind of stuck in this little cute little <coughs> back and forth and it's why it causes the teams to fight. While that's... <coughs> yeah. Yeah, I had a feeling I'd be still a little hacky and stuff. So while that's going... On the Zongyak have a visit from... From the Black Cross Fjord. Her, who is essentially... They revive himself through the hatred of... That Sentai. Known as the Black Cross King. And has allied himself with the Zongyak to destroy the... The Sentai Rangers too comfortable. Well, which now sees the heroes have to overcome their their differences to save the world. So, this so this is sort of something that uh, so from the various movies I've wa watched following this, generally the t the versus portion doesn't really factor that much into the main plot plot. But it does start off by giving us two teams with very different ideologies. Jeez, the Ghost Sages are the straight, pure he heroes. The Gokaiders anti-hero heroes, and they're innately at odds with one another because one of them wants to more or less take over, wants to use their powers for good, while the other just wants them for the greatest treasure in the universe. First, which does lead to some early con. conflict that sees them going against one another until they're forced to kind of put aside their differences to deal with the Bla cross king and by extension some of the revived war evil war evil generals that he brings back and I like Black Cross King as a villain like Yes, he's the standard, more or less, Gar, I'm evil and I want to destroy everything, but it's like, he's up front with it. He just wants to destroy the scent. Ties and not, doesn't really care about the, um. <coughs> then just wanting to more or less take out the world. He just wants to destroy him because he hates him so much. And, never mind. Right, generals do make for a legitimate. And threat that the teams have to use to come overcome their difference. This is when they're kind of split up, up and 
I think this this has arguably some of the best chemistry from a versus movie from what I've seen so far. I haven't seen all of them yet. Yet from more or less how they start off initially hostile towards one another for a legitimate a good reason and then they're forced to kind of have to to get over to to put aside those differences and learn to understand one another in order to face the threat that they're currently fight. Right. And they are actually some of the best set pieces. <laughs> I also kind of like the thing that when the ghost stages just do their C4 and the ghost is like, hey, that's her image being stolen. I'm like, this is, they really went all out for this. The production value on this is incredible. There's a lot of great camera shots. The action is really well done. That sight of every single previous Team Sans Extra Heroes is, even more or less 10 years on, it is still an incredible sight. I all think it's considered. The amount of, like, they could have just more or less gone for the base teams, but they went all out in getting a whole, whole bunch of stunt actors. It is honestly inc incredible. It is. Th this special is more or less just worth it for the spectacle about this. And, like, like I haven't even gone into, like, the B-plot, which involves a bunch of past Sentai alum. Night coming around to this unluck. Lucky salary man who's trying to sell his. We just kind of lost all help, and more or less they come to encourage him to more or less look at the bright side of things. And like, it's impressive that they get a good amount of representations, like Showa Air, Air with Densey Man, 90s Heisei with Die Ranger, and then 2000s Heisei with. It's superfluous. This and more or less sets up the most out of nowhere thing, like the, like his, his toy variable more or less growing for the last mega fight. But like, it works in context because more. That's in 2011, the Tohoku earthquake and tsunami, which led to a nuclear meltdown, happened three months before the film was released. It was, the film was delayed from its late May to early June release because of it. And like, it's more or less shown. <laughs> yeah. Like, at the end, when more or less it seems like Black Cross Satan more or less has them on the, the ropes, it feels up. Learn to the hopelessness that that event seemingly brought in them. And when it all seems like hope's lost, that same salary man and a kid who has a died dense until I don't ask about more or less what goes in the whole thing about they're selling the toys in universe. There's are the Rangers being paid for more or less their the use of their likeness? This, they rally the, the people to cheer for heroes and as a really solid representation of old and young supporters of Sentai Dai standing to believe in the, in the heroes they believed in for so many years. Look, this has been rambling, but like, this is a really great, great movie. One of the best I've seen, honestly. The action is solid, it's a fun romp, even if it's a very Biden of numbers plus. <laughs> Uh, and it's just, even as someone who started here, it is awe-inspiring to think that this series has come that far. And more or less, I have a whole bunch of other things to more or less have to watch. Including the 45 years of this. And the 50 years of Kamen Rider. And Ultraman. Garo. And a whole bunch of other one-off things. Well, I have a bunch of things to go off of. I have a lot of catching up over the next couple of years.
the flying ghost ship can just be described as just pure filler. Well, it does have some good spectacle from the last fight to the fight against all the previous m mooks throughout the franchise. It's a 30 minute special meant to more or less lead into the Kamen Rider movie that year. In this case, oh, this. Oh, this movie. Movie. So, the Rangers more or less go onto this mysterious ghost ship because it has this treasure called God's Eye, capable of granting whatever wish those who hold it. So, seeing it as a check, a shortcut to the great treasure in the view verse the Go Kaijers minus Guy for some reason go to the ship to claim to claim it and and have to deal with whatever traps. Wait, now I will give credit that the ship's design looks actually really good. This old, decrepit, creepy looking looking sh ship mixes a classic ship with the future designs and and the film's original villain, Los Dark, which I will more or less state as one of the lamest names ever since it's just the dark because Los is is the in English. <laughs> Though it might not be the Spanish word low, so I'm thinking too hard in this one for some reason. Reason has a cool, grim, British appearance, but. Eh, it, it's just a big fight scene. Fight scene. The main villain Deck Ranger shows up because. because it feels a lot more hot. Well, because it's just. Oh, it's that thing. Wait, remember that thing? And, uh, the Zangaksha, uh, because they also want God's eye. Well, I would dare merely drop the plot as they failed to fall, fall on to it, and we never see him again, because I guess when it fails once, Wars Girls just gives up immediately. There's a tree of, of comedic ghosts who try to deter people from stealing the God's eye. I, to a day... Did Lo start their country them up? Were they originally members of the crew? Going off that what a what a vouch Lo Stark. We learn he's primarily luring in greedy people in order to bring himself back to life by stealing their life force and use the god's eye for himself. Self, but we learned nothing about him. He's just there, and that's the best way I can describe it. It's just there. Nothing is too awful, but at the same time, nothing is particularly stand out outside of it, except maybe the end of the baseball match, which brings in in the odd group made you know, go go on your actresses who exist both in and out of the show up here. You know, that was one of the very few reactions, but that was just more an okay, why? Like, even the whole marvelous more or less going. When his crew tells them, a hind feels so, so hollow because, unless you know he's going to use the wish to bring them back. It's not like the series prior has shown him. Like the series prior has shown, Marvelous does deeply care about his team. And let's seeing as how there's still uh, half a series left. Not that this should, should tell you that nothing major ends up happening here. It's fine, but unless you... You're really lacking any go your desire. This is one of those films you can kind of skip. So for that bit of filler nonsense, it's time to more or less get to the... What was initially the last go your film? Not counting more or less the Go Buster. Crossover. <laughs> more go your versus... Uchuki. Yeah, man. So, 2012 more or less marked the 30th anniversary of the original Space Sheriff. God. The first in Toei's series. So, a quick rundown. Metal Heroes was basically like Super Sentai's sister show during the 80s and 90s. These when Kamen Rider was sort of on break. break. With the exception of at the time they all aired together at the same time with Blackheart. RX. It was sort of in that same age range as Common Rider, a slightly older, older demographic dealing with darker stories. 
until the last two entries which decided to go more kid friendly to more or less pick up ratings which ended up killing the show. No one thought these two things were a good idea, right? No one did, right? Promise me that no one thought, thought, thought live action anime suits were a good idea, right? Nanny, who the thing to note about heroes that more or less had start notable Sentai alumni at the t time, Kenji, Oba, who initially started out as a suit actor for Tori before becoming a lead member in the ensemble with Sentai's revival as Super Sentai with Battle Fever J, where he pl played Battle Ken Kenya Shiro Ak Akabono, the the team kid of the gr group who also was was really good with animals and became one of the show's most popular characters. The following year, he got promoted to second in command and still coming from Leaf and Die, where our own Bayan soon enough became. Well, let's get his own, own story, Roll and Gavin, which is actually sort of funny because Yoshikawa told him that if Galvan ever dipped in the single digit ratings, the show would be cut, which is not the greatest motivation of Nikon all that's considered. I mean, I mean how would you feel like if you were told like, hey! If this show ever dips be below single digit ratings which is kind of ironic considering how Sentai Titan Coven Rider today is primarily in the low single digit rate so metal so this film not only celebrates 30 years of Metal Hero but also but also more or less one of one of Sentai's early rising stars in Kenji. Oh, so... So... The film starts with G Gavon down in the Gokai Galleon and more or less taking in the Gokai. There's Sans guy who was shopping for food and arresting them for piracy, which is... Garbage, since... Less than the early episodes that Greater's cleared her name, and yeah, it's a ruse to more or less oust the fake prison warden who's actually an actual commander who has who is boasting his own bootleg. G Gavin, he tells the others to escape, and Marvelous feels like he has seen him before because of a hand gesture. And soon learn learns that he knew Gavin has a child when designing a attack a ship. Ship. So Marvelous and crew plan this. Plan a prison in order to save her and prevent the Maku space from expanding beyond its current place. So what follows is a really fun romp of a prison infiltration and breakout movie. It also has some funny moments like I like when they stumble upon <coughs> Kenya and Denzel and think that's Gavin until more or less guy states that you can tell them apart by smelling, which Yes, it's stupid, and it's nice to ignore the <coughs> fact that the actor has played multiple roles across his career in the same show. Shows. Um, other notable highlights I liked, um, the prison where we see a bunch of old class six Sentai villains showing up, and the chaos that evolves from it when a Gorman shows up, looks around and just goes to struggle. Alarm is a good high. Like, um, despite pushing 50, uh, Kenji Obe is still impressive. Out of suit. Good for how late in his life he is. Is um um other action highlights is more or less a him fighting Mon Drake by herself when everyone else was kind of grouped two and two, so Marvelous can go fight in his own. Oh, and it's arguably one of the highlights of the film. Man, we get our first see of the Goldbusters, which which. Does everything right in tone, style, and action. It is. It does what it needs to to get people excited for the for the next year. Yeah. Really, the biggest issue is it overstays. It's welcome. Well, it has so many climactic f fights, but at the prison, it just is just. It's just action, action, action. Action. I mean, we get a big Gokai change, which never happened in the main show. You know, but I just kind of found myself zoning out to a point. But, 
I, I like the end portion where more or less, less Kenji transforms into his three previous, previous roles. And plus, if you grew up with this, this must have been mind blowing. Am I missing anything? Uh. Oh yeah, the main villains. Uh, Asherat and his bootleg Gavin. Um. I like how they look. Uh, yeah, it's better. I don't remember much about them. Them. It doesn't help that bootleg Aaron really has no character. There to speak of. Uh, but that's kind of that. Despite all we're saying, it's welcome. I think this is another decent film. Really good film. Yeah, all things considered, the if you didn't grow up with Showa and Rotoku, with still with Watch. And that leaves us with the last, and at this point, late, latest movie. Movie that I will probably review for a long time. Time. Kaisoku Sentai Ten Gokaiger. Yes, it has been ten. Ten years since Gokaiger first hit TV waves. Let's just sit on that moment for a little bit. What have I been doing these past ten years? What have I accomplished? Is this what I'm going to be doing for the next 10 years after this? Anywho. So the film's plot into, entails a new s sport, the Super Sentai Derby Coliseum, which uses the Ranger Keys of all previous Sentai, plus some um, acquired technology from dead par pirates, which allows the Japanese government to offer fa fans of are the icons the ability to ban on who would win in a fight between certain matchups from ninjas to speedsters? All that's missing is the Gokaigers. Well, Guy is on board since he set up the project, he soon, soon learns the rest of the Gokaigers have split up for some reason. And just as that happens, a now eye patch wearing Marvelous shows up on Earth and is not pleased what the country has done to their heroes and sets out to put an end to it. But what, but what has happened to the other Gokaigers, Sans on who we see, see the first one before credits, have they truly broke up, and is there a, and there, is there really a need to totally destroy this not evil plan that benefits all humanity? Yeah, the plan, the plot is whole, is dumb, it's, <clears throat> relies on the fact that all of the heroes are more than willing to just give up their keys to, key, Keys, but the idea of the Derby does give some interesting matchups in the initial fights, not counting Gokaiger or Zenkaiger since it's still airing. And, but considering what Guy is and what we saw in the order, he's clearly able to more or less get that. That then, Ten Gokaiger really does not shake up anything about the series. Series are more or less their post show appearances. One or more of the Gokaigers will be acting like a jerk and have some kind of goal that will cause them to butt heads with someone. Else, before they reveal their hands and turn it on the villains, it's been a thing since Tyson, and they did it again for Gokaiger versus Go Buster, and they and they do it to a lesser degree from their appearance in Ju Ojer. But honestly, that doesn't bother me here because I like Tyson, which like the first Tyson, which felt like a whole bunch of 5D 5D chess BS complication that was. It was there for epic sake and not common sense. It, it does initially come off as a gray on who is right in the situation. Unless you've watched anything like this tournament, you've likely seen the twist come through. Besides, no one came here because they wanted to see some evolution of the story. You wanted to slip back into, into the nice cozy pants of the Gokaiders being awesome and the whole treasure trove affair. Service from the tip of the... Of the Sentai Arxberg to the deep, dark blue underbelly of the iceberg. Which this special does to about 200%. This team still has arguably some of the best chemistry. Chemistry in Sentai history. <clears throat> While they're not a full team for most of it, which can seem disappointing, I mean, they do give some, some decent duos and Guy and Don's early chem comedic and exposition of what's happened since you owed your mar marvelous shows up to initiate con like and ends up joined by Ahim who 
let's be frank here, this is still only one of the best duos has. Um, the short of this that kind of falls to Luke and Joe, who just... Lucas shows up initially as an as a rather unbelievable bounty hunter, and then shows up at the end in a rather nice reference to Ure, while Joe gets early the most, most awesome return and henchman so against a clone Aka Ranger. His contribution is rather minimal compared to the rest of it. I mean, but, uh, yeah, that return is pretty st And it's what the film's about. The Gokiders are being awesome and goofy at the same time, and in this case, everyone more or less feels like they fit back into the role they acted all those years ago. It's really so. And the fan service is really so. But here, we get some, some returning cameos from, from Otter from the more obvious to the other kind, like the teenage me and cock a childhood child act actors to of all things things the developer of the derby system being that kid who stole them the mobile right to you can read yeah that's a um, deep cut then Navi being left like the Zoodra thing um in terms of Gokai changes, it's primarily the rest from Zhuodra through Kira Major, so some people might be <clears throat> a little sad for that. The biggest issue here is that it really fits a lot into its tent, into its hour-long time span, but it kind of feels overblown at times. It comes to the detriment of certain elements, like, yeah, the villains, the villains are not great. great. The, the Bakut pirates who are, who team up with the Japanese minister at the... <clears throat> That's to fuel an army to invade other planets. I mean, they look nice, but their personalities are kind of one note to the extent that they don't have personalities. There's honestly the best part is the is their bruiser who's basically played by Oren from Common Rider. Guy just just going about cheerless in the latter half and looking like a blue version of Drex Destroyer. Even the most interesting. Part of the ensemble, well, gets known name is quickly dealt dealt with by that kid with a straight punch to the face, and there's no fallout, now, no arrest, no new. There was no reaction from the people that more, unless someone in the government is um. Making with pirates, it feels so underbaked. And the big new aesthetic thing is the new cross. Um, we're made from the uh, galleon after it's fun for for destruction that grants the, the base five gokai there's a piece of armor representative their mech's location from a gokai uh, uh, so marvelous gets a chest piece piece donna joe get a gun arm and multi cell respective lee and luke and i get leg can and it's the pulverize the villains like i know i can look up there Dang, but honestly, are you going to them? And they all combine onto Marvelous to be a full battle artist. It's bulky, it's silly looking, but dang, it actually takes out the big bad unlike a certain series, where it just takes out some mooks and gets one shot by the big bad. And ten decade bad. God, even after all of these years, Gokai joined by extension Sentai is showing up right on how to do anniversaries and introducing a new power. So, yeah, yeah, Ten Gokaiger is just a great celebration of what Gokaiger is, and more as what it still stands to be. B. Even after 45 years, it's still a fan service treat that I feel like, like, even if the story is not the most fleshed out, it is still an enjoyable ride. Alright, eh, if I were to have to rank this, I would say, 199 is the best of these, followed by by this, then Gavin, and then very far off the load is the 30 minute special. But overall, all Gokai has had some pretty enjoyable movies. So that's that. That. Videos, subscription, videos, videos, YouTube channel, subscribe, hit button, and goodbye.